Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to try to create a dashboard with the help of AI. I'm going to ask ChatGPT to create metrics and insights based on my source data. Then I'm going to ask it to create measures for it, also suggest visuals for it. And then I try mid journey and I'm going to try to build a dashboard layout based on this information. If you're not familiar with these tools, ChatGPT is an AI language model, which generates text and you can basically chat with it. You can ask it to do anything like creating a meal plan or a workout plan or writing an essay on World War II history. It's going to do it for you. And Midjourney is a text to image AI model. It also translates natural language, like you just text into it and it translates it into an image. I tried both and I'm really blown away with them. So they are really like the first kind of models which actually work and it's crazy what they're capable of. And this is only the beginning. So I have AdventureWorks CS dashboard here. It has a fact table and six dimension tables. And here is the data source. Simple Excel workbook with simple data. Okay, let's go to ChatGPT. You can just Google it like this, ChatGPT, and try ChatGPT, and you can create an account. It's currently free, but most likely it's gonna cost money in the future. I already have an account, and then if you open it up, it looks like this. You can just click on new chat and create your first conversation with it. First, what we want to do is to feed the information to it, like what kind of data we have and if it can create metrics and insights based on this data. So I have the sales data in Excel and I want to create a dashboard report from it in Power BI. Sales. I want to give some more information to it, like what kind of grain the data has and what dimension tables and columns and what fact tables and columns does it have. So I'm just gonna give the granularity is one order line with one product. And then the dimension tables are, let's go back to the source data, AdventureWorks sales order data. And I'm just gonna copy paste the column names, this and putting it here. I'm gonna give some commas. Yeah, this is the first one. I copied the rest of the dimension tables and now we will also give it the fact table, which is the sales data. The fact table is, and the columns are giving the commas. Okay, now let's see if it can give us some ideas based on this information. Give me 10K insights and metrics based on this data metrics even if i have a typo it can detect what i mean most of the time it takes a little while while it works so it actually gives an outline what kind of insights it found and what do they mean which i think it's pretty cool but like the first five are kind of the same, like by filter differently. First six, by the way, which is okay. That's kind of useful, but I would say it's one thing. Average order quantity. This is pretty cool so far, but it's nothing which you wouldn't normally think of. But still, it gives some ideas and you can also build on this. Let's see if we can change it a bit so it combines the first six. Consider the first six metrics as one because it's all says by something and create 10 metrics based on this. Well, it didn't really work. <laughs> Let's see if it can create other metrics instead of them. Uh, okay, I think it understands it. Well, it didn't really understand it. It created six instead of that. And it still created kind of the same metrics. Okay, but I think we have enough. 
and we can try and select some of them and we can ask it to write measures for it. Okay, let's say write text code for the following metrics. We have eight and write text code for the following metrics. Uh, can type. So here are the measures. I looked into it off camera and I'm not gonna go through all of them, but I want to point out some issues. One of them is that it used extended amount instead of sales amount. As you can see, we have a sales amount column and extended amount minus the unit price discount gives the sales amount. Another thing was here, order fulfillment rate. It has an issue using calculates. We can check it out. I'm gonna copy the code. These are not very complicated DAX codes, but already on this level, it has some issues with it. So let's create a new measure. Yeah, the count function only accepts the column reference. So it puts the filter table argument inside of count. How it could be better is like creating an argument with calculate out of it. Calculate says data and copy count here. And this is the same here. I don't need this thing actually because these are all unique values. It seems that it fixed the problem. Let's check it. I'm gonna put here month. Let's change the format. It's not sorted, but it's okay now. And putting order fulfillment rate. This is correct. I checked the data and seemingly the ship date key is smaller everywhere than the due date key. So this should be okay. Another measure I want to show is the product return rate. Let's copy it. And this is the same, okay. Change it to calculate sales product count the sales product key. I have to change the commas to semicommas because it's German. And you already see here the issue. There is simply no return table if you look at it. So it just thought out the table which doesn't exist in the data model. And it actually points it out here that make sure that the product return rate and order fulfillment rate are calculated based on the data you have in your data set. Okay, but you didn't make it sure. I don't get it. So let's see if we can do something about these things. No return column. This says. Well, okay. It just says that we can create a new table with the returns, but we don't have the data. So it's not very useful for us, to be honest. Order fulfillment rate. Oh, it also did uh, order fulfillment rate for us, but that was okay. And it actually changed code a little bit. So I'm going to replace the product return rate with another measure with average order quantity. Okay. I'm not gonna fix these measures now. I'm going to create them off camera and then we can go to the next step, which is suggesting visuals for these metrics. By creating the measures, I noticed that uh, they don't really add any extra value, like average order quantity or order fulfillment rate, but I'm gonna leave it at it now and let's see what can we start with this. Let's see if we can get a visual outline for these metrics. Let's ask first what visuals to use with them. What graphs and charts to use with each metric. I'm going to ask it to create two dashboards. Overview dashboard with the 
the key matrix and that details has colored with more in-depth information based on the following matrix. Okay. Okay, I had to reload it and let's ask the same question. Let's see. Okay, it gave a lot of information. It kind of gave two different answers, like once with the eight metrics, but then separately visuals. So maybe it was not the correct question to ask or the correct prompt, but we are gonna go with it. Like here, total sales, stack column chart, then total sales, card visual. Okay, it's too much information. I'm gonna check only the overview dashboard. It says what kind of visual to use with which metrics, which is kind of cool. But let's see how it works. I'm gonna copy this, go to Power BI, create a new page, overview. And I'm gonna put the info into a text box for now. Okay, card visual displaying the total sales, card visual displaying the net profit margin, a line chart visual displaying the trend of average unit price over time. A stack column chart visual displaying the gross margin by channel. Well, it doesn't say if there is something on the x-axis. Let's put month. A line chart visual displaying the trend of quantity of sales over time. A line chart visual displaying the trend of average order value over time. And a go chart displaying the order fulfillment rate. Yeah, this is always 100% as we saw before. Okay, these are the visuals. To be honest, it doesn't look that bad. Like I see some potential in it, but let's see if ChatGPT can place them on the canvas. I'm gonna ask him to give me a composition of the visuals. On the overview dashboard, the dashboard has 1280 pixel width and 720 pixel height. Where and how to place the visuals? Okay, it gave a lot of information. Let's see what we can do with it. I'm gonna copy it into Power BI. Card visual should be top left corner, one quarter, one quarter size. Top left corner. It doesn't include titles and stuff like that. I'm gonna leave some space for it. One quarter. Something like this. The other card visual should be next to it with the same size. One quarter, one quarter. Okay, it's kind of okay. Line chart visual displaying the trend of average unit price over time can be placed next to the net profit margin card taking about half of the width and half of the height. That would be this here, half size, half height, like this. Stack column chart visual can be placed next to the line chart. Next to where? I don't get it. Because this is one quarter, this is one quarter, this is one half. There is no more space there. Okay, that's not working, that's one thing. The line chart visual with the quantity of sales should be placed below the stack column chart, which we already couldn't place, so that's not working out. But if we put it on the other side, like this, okay, kind of. The line chart with the average order value should be next to the line chart visual. But which one? I guess the other one, what we had before. Yeah, kind of extend, it would extend to this direction or am I not reading it correctly? Anyway, it's not working that well. The go chart visual can be placed next to the line chart visual. Which line chart again? Well, it goes to this direction, so it's not very good, but I guess we can adjust it ourselves just for now. I'm gonna delete this. Something like this could work, actually. It's arguable if it makes sense or not, but this could be a composition. So 
ChatGPT didn't really help us out there. I think if we tweak it a bit and change the prompt and point these things out that how do they fit, it could work. But I want to move on to the next step. We are going to go to the other AI mid journey and create a dashboard template or layout based on this data. Let's see what we can get out of it. I have mid journey already open here, but if you don't have it, you can just type it in Google and create an account for yourself. This is on Discord, so you have to have a Discord account for it. Join the beta and going for it. I have it here. If you are there, just read the rules and getting started. And then you can go to a newbies channel, newbies room. And let's see what you can do here. We can create a prompt based on our dashboard. Input says dashboard in Power BI with two cards, top left corner, and go chart, top right corner, line chart, left middle, stack bar chart, left bottom, line chart, right middle, line chart, right bottom. We can add some additional info it, like colors, color scheme. I like to add like Figma or Dribble, it makes it a bit or artistic. I'm gonna show different prompts because this is not gonna be the one which works best, I think. Let's copy this. This is how you call a prompt. You have to put this forward slash imagine and then we are just going to copy it here. Okay, it took a while while I found it. Well, this doesn't look that great in my opinion, not at all. So how I would use Midjourney actually is to give more flexibility to it. For example, if you put Power BI, it's gonna do very Power BI-ish reports like this. So I'm gonna give the same prompt. Uh, with this envelope, you can send it to yourself. Okay. I'm gonna give the same prompt, but without Power BI. Let's see what it does. Oh, I forgot to give imagine. This looks a bit better. <laughs> it doesn't look anything like our dashboard, that's for sure, but it's more like for brainstorming, getting ideas, what can you do, what kind of colors you could use. So if you just want to take any ideas of it, then I think we can go even more flexible. So I'm going to save it send it to myself and create an other prompt. I'm gonna reduce what I can, like cards, line charts, chart, chart, figma, trigger, light colors, colors, scheme. You can go very creative here. So you can try many different things and experimenting with it. Let's see what it gives us. Here is the result. I actually like this one. I like this one and also this is not bad, but this is not something we could actually create. So by that I mean the lines. You cannot create curved lines in a line chart. But I like the colors from this one and the composition kind of. It's again nothing like our initial dashboard, but we can take elements out of it and creating something similar. So I like this one. This is the one I'm gonna do. I'm gonna open it in browser and save the image. And then I can just go to Figma, import this image and try to make something out of it. Altogether, it wasn't really possible to build a dashboard based on the information provided by the AI, but it was helpful. So it was especially helpful with the insights and metrics I think that was quite cool. It was less helpful with the measures and the visuals, but at the end, the dashboard layout was pretty cool, I think, which is obviously not an exact layout which we can use, but it's good for brainstorming. It can give some ideas. So it really takes away this cognitive expenditure, like you have to think basically less, but you still have to think it because you don't necessarily get the correct answers. And honestly, even though it didn't really work out that well, I'm still 
literally blown away with this kind of thing. So it's crazy that you can just put some text in it and it creates something for you. And this is something I've never seen before. And this is the first time that AI is commercially available on such a level, which is actually useful, which you can actually turn to your advantage and you can become more productive with it. So this is something like, I think I felt when the iPhone came out. I remember when I was like, I don't know, maybe 10, but my brother got this iPod touch and this was something I never seen before. And it was, this was this predecessor of iPhone, this iPod touch. And I was just amazed by it. And that became a thing with the first iPhone, which is something that changed our lives forever. And I think AI has the same potential because it can be really revolutionary. It exponentially gets better and better. So I'm really interested how it's going to turn out. I'm also interested in what do you think about it and if you see any potential it or are you planning to use it for anything, even if it's not Power BI, maybe something else. You can leave a comment and let me know and the others what's your take on it. And if you like the video, you can give it a like. See you next time.